Hi everyone, I'm Doug from DigiPen in Redmond. Thank you all for joining me for the basic game design series. In these videos, we'll learn how numbers can make a difference in how much fun a game is. Before we talk about numbers, though, let's take a look at an example of how a video game comes together. A compelling video game experience is a composition of the elements of fun – computer science, game design, sound design, art and animation, and mathematics. Each of these elements is a necessary component of the creation of a game. To demonstrate these elements of fun, let's examine a slice of the process of developing a 2D platformer. Much of the fun of playing a 2D platformer comes from the feeling the player gets from making the hero jump, so the game design team gets to work right away on planning the nature of the jump. How high should the hero go? How far? How fast? These are all game design questions. Meanwhile, the art team begins designing the look of the game, including the hero. What is their visual style? What is their color palette? The art director creates some reference sketches to define the hero's appearance, and then the animator uses them while creating the detailed art assets that will go into the game. From the start, the music composer knows the game will need music, and the sound effects designer knows that the hero will run, jump, land on the ground, and so on. As details roll in from the other teams, they make adjustments as necessary. Before the hero's art and sound effects are ready, the game designers begin creating the hero's jumping behavior. They must consider the requirements established by what kind of game is being made. In the case of this particular game, most of the action takes place horizontally, with limited up and down movement. This means that the hero won't have to jump up onto high ledges, but they may need to clear wide gaps. Based on this, the designers decide that the hero's jump should not be extremely high, but it should be somewhat far. They'll use this decision as a starting point, but extensive playtesting will show where they're right and where they're wrong. Both the game designers and the programmers must use their skills and knowledge of mathematics to make the jump behave correctly. The gameplay programmers support the game designers by writing the code that enables the hero to move and jump. They need to know which math principles to use to give the desired appearance. Using the wrong formulas and functions can result in a very unconvincing jump. The game designers, on the other hand, are the ones who adjust the specific numbers that control the hero's movement speed and jump height, as well as the strength of gravity. If they don't understand the math behind these numbers, they'll have a hard time coming up with values that make things look natural. Eventually, bit by bit, these elements all come together, and the result is a running, jumping hero in a world that looks and sounds just right. As more features and content are added, this process continues until the game is complete. The resulting experience is a delicate composition of computer science, game design, sound design, art and animation, and mathematics. The elements of fun. That's enough talking about video games for now. We've prepared a game in Scratch for you to play. Click the link in the description below, and then find the project called Crystal Cat. Click the green flag to begin playing Crystal Cat, then use the arrow keys to move and jump, and collect as many crystals as you can before the time runs out. Pause the video and try it out now, and then come back after you're done playing. So, what do you think? Is Crystal Cat fun? The thing that players usually enjoy the most about games like this is how it feels to control the hero. The way the hero moves and jumps is very important to these games, because movement and jumping are the player's core actions. 
They're what the player spends the most time doing, and the rest of the game is built around them. Movement and jumping in Crystal Cat depend on three numbers. Movement speed, which controls how fast the hero moves, jump speed, which controls how fast the hero jumps, and the strength of gravity, which controls how fast the hero falls. How different do you think the game might feel if these numbers were changed? As a matter of fact, you don't need to guess. You can find out for yourself. Click the green flag to play Crystal Cat again, and this time, when the game starts, press the 1 key on your keyboard. You'll see the hero change color, and as you play the game, you'll notice that the way you control the hero feels very different. Pause the video and try it out now. What did you think? With the hero darting around so quickly, it's kind of tricky to grab the crystals, isn't it? Now click the green flag to play the game again, but this time, press the 2 key on your keyboard when the game starts. The hero will change to a different color, and the controls will feel very different in a very different way. Pause the video and try it out now. How was that? It's kind of like being on the moon, isn't it? Let's try this one more time, and this time, press the 3 key on your keyboard when the game starts. The hero will change to yet another color, and the controls will feel very strange. Pause the video and try it out now. What? The hero runs backwards? That doesn't seem right, does it? All of these differences are caused by changes to the game's movement speed, jump speed, and gravity numbers. You can see that changes in these numbers can have a very big effect on the experience of the game. It's quiz time! Pause the video and write down your answers. Okay, here come the answers. How did you do? Pause the video if you want to check your work. Let's recap what we've learned in this video. First, we discussed how an engaging game experience is composed using the elements of fun, computer science, game design, sound design, art and animation, and mathematics. Next, we looked at some of the game design questions to think about when making a 2D platformer, and how important the feeling of the jump is. Then, we looked at how the different elements of fun are created by the developers of each element. Next, we looked at how the different elements come together and are refined to make a complete and satisfying game. Finally, we looked at the game Crystal Cat and how it incorporates all the elements of fun, and we played it with a few different changes to its movement speed, jump speed, and gravity numbers. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at the movement speed number and the effect it has on the experience of playing Crystal Cat.